originally founded in the 1850s. However, the history of Mesilla Valley goes back much further than that. In fact, some of the earliest inhabitants of the area were the nomadic American Indians known as the Mansos. The area was then explored by Spanish conquistadors. Two of the most famous included both Francisco Coronado as well as Juan de Oñate. Though it's believed that they were in the vicinity of the area, they never actually stopped and on their journey to the north, they looked for the famous Seven Cities of Cibula, or the Seven Cities of Gold. Because they never found gold in the area, the region was never actually settled in a high capacity for over 200 years. Now things will start to change after 1821, when Mexico gained its independence from Spain. The region then became a part of Mexican territory instead of Spanish. Again, we're not going to see a lot of action in the area until the signing of the treaty, Guadalupe Hildago. Now, in this treaty, it ended the Mexican and American War. The United States ended up gaining most of Mexico's northern territory, while Mexico was allowed to keep their southern territory. But it put Mesilla in a really awkward position because Mesilla and the surrounding area was all in a large land strip that was known as no man's land. This is because both Mexico as well as the United States claimed the territory to be their own. Okay, it's as a part of no man's land where Mesilla was founded. Now Mesilla was originally founded by the Mexican government as a place where people who were living in northern Mexico could relocate to or move further south of if they didn't want to become members of the United States. So that's where, Me where Mesilla got its foundation. Mesilla's population began to grow. And as this happened, we see more and more raids by Apache Indians that lived nearby. They would come into the town and they would take horses, they would steal food and other supplies. Well, the citizens needed protection. So the fort, Fort Fillmore, was founded just nearby. Once this happened, we're gonna see more and more trade in Mesilla. So we're gonna see Mesilla really flourish with all of this trade up until 1854. In 1854, the United States and Mexico decided that it was finally time to distinguish that border in no man's land. What belonged to Mexico? What belonged to the United States? So they, the United States decided to purchase all that strip of territory, once known as no man's land. This became known as the Gadsden Purchase. Now the Gadsden Purchase, signed in 1854, was signed here in this plaza. Why was it signed in the plaza? Well, the plaza really, in all Spanish and most Mexican cities, is the heart of the culture. It's where all the social activities take place, as well as most of the political events. And Mesilla was no exception. Now, not only was the Gadsden Purchase signed here in this plaza, but this plaza was actually one of the most important social regions at the time. People from Chihuahua, people from Tucson, would all come to um, Mesilla during this period. Now the reason that they came to Mesilla was because it was the largest place to come at the time and it had the most social events. These social events included things such as dances, bullfighting, as well as theatrical performances. And of course with all that fun we have some outlaws. One of the most notorious was Billy the Kid. Now if you look just over to my right you're gonna see down at the corner of the plaza. This used to be the old courthouse where Billy the Kid was actually tried and sentenced to death in 1881. 1881 is also when we see Messias start to decline in population. 
It was in 1881 that the railroad company decided to build the railroad on the outskirts of Mesilla, closer to Las Cruces. So Las Cruces gained the county seat, as well as the population. People began to move out of Mesilla and into Las Cruces. Mesilla definitely saw a height of happiness, as well as a small decline. But after the decline, we still see that it hold, held incredibly important historical significance to New Mexico. In fact, in the 1950s, Mesilla was declared a state monument for its historical importance to the state, as well as its importance to the creation of the United States. So if you get a chance, come on down to Mesilla. Just by talking to the people, looking at the architecture, as well as eating some of the amazing food or participating in the events, you can feel the important Mexican culture that is still alive today. Okay, so now I've given you a small taste of how New Mexico's history and its past has influenced the state. In fact, if you look at the scene behind me, you can see the Pueblo structure of houses that still exist today. These connections between the past and cultural influences today are endless. So now it's your turn. You and a partner will team up together and you will pick one cultural group from a list provided by me and you're going to tell their story. You'll give us a little bit of history about the group itself, as well as its cultural significance to the state of New Mexico. I'll provide not only an assignment sheet, but also a rubric to help you along the way. Good luck, and I can't wait to see what you come up with.